Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And today we are going to go through a little hack I built out for one of my students. And he came to me and he said, okay, um, I don't know what this page is built on. I see up here it says PHP. I looked at the code. There's really nothing in here that tells me what it was built on. Uh, at least not that I remember finding. I did this probably two weeks ago. And um, so he, uh, he had this order bump here clearly is an order bump looks very much like the order bumps built directly into click funnels and you see here at the top you got a little a little check mark you got a border around the outside and then you have this button down here and as you see as i hovered over the button it says yes add to my order and then when i click on the button it says added to order but it also what it did is it made this check mark here and turned that blue and then also change the border. So I'll turn it back off again. And you see we're back to the dashed border, no check, and the uh, button has not changed. So now the button is black and it says add it to order. We do that, turns back to green, and of course we have our hover effect on there. But then also if you check in here, it does exactly the same thing. You could check up here and it changes the border and changes the button as well. And so my challenge, of course, was to build this out into click funnels. And of course, we can come in here and we can inspect this element all day long and take a look at it. And so again, here is the text of that element right there. And the only thing that I think I missed on here while building it out, and what's really funny is earlier today I was looking at this and there was a little arrow here and now all of a sudden that arrow isn't there anymore. Maybe I just need to reload the page. Maybe I, I think that's what it was. Yeah. I was playing around with the code and I whacked that arrow off of there. So there's that little arrow there. I put that in today. I fixed the fonts today, but the only thing I didn't do is you're going to see right here that there is some italics. So this part here, advanced acquisition theory, I didn't touch that. And because what I did do is I created this and I put all of the, um, all of the, what am I saying here? The italics and the underline and the bolding. And I put this in here into the order form or uh, bump, I should say. And I'll show you how I did that. You can do the exact same thing for this up here. In fact, what I would do is I would probably, you know, have this part here underlined, maybe a larger font size, maybe even a different color. And again, you can do all that if you create this as, as its own separate element and insert it in here like I did with this paragraph. So let me show you my version of this. And actually, let me um, kill this so we have it more the same size. And you see here, mine turned out virtually the same as this one over here. And when you come in and you click on this little box right there, changes this down at the bottom and back and forth and in fact what i need to do oh well, that's right i can't do that right now if i reload the page it's going to mess everything up so we'll show you that at the end i did put in the uh little arrow at the end which why does it keep disappearing over here did i i don't think i changed that huh that's funny okay either way i have a little arrow on there just like they had but either way you click on the on the uh, little checkbox, changes the border changes the button Click on the button, does the exact same thing, changes everything out. We got hover and the text changes and all that. So let's take a look at how I built this out. And we have to come to here. We're going to close that. And so what I have is I have the order bump itself right there. So you come in, you fill out the things in the order bump. The headline was 17 pixels. You put in the text up here. I deleted out everything for the headline and the text. Don't really need to because we're actually going to completely remove that element or hide the element probably more accurately on the page so you don't see it. Set your, uh, set your red color here, EA0000. And that's pretty much it in here. I don't think there was really anything else. Okay, border radius of five pixels and whatever you see right there. So that was it, and we have it here, and then we have a button that I put below it. And on that button, we put in the text, of course. So this here is, yes, add to my order. That's what you're going to see on the, on the first thing here before it gets clicked. And then it says, added to order afterwards. So what I'm doing in the code is I'm saying, 
okay, when it's in his normal state, do yes, add to my order. And then after it's been clicked, hide the normal text and just show the subtext in, in its place. And so we do that. And then we got a background color here of 18 AC 00. And over here, I don't think there was much of anything vertical spacing 15, except down here we have the pointer. So it's FA mouse pointer is the font awesome font uh, to go at the end of the line. And then I guess the one other thing I almost forgot here is we have to do a set action. And here we say JavaScript colon toggle bump and two parentheses. And what that does is it says when that button is clicked, you want to run this JavaScript code. So it runs a JavaScript function called toggle bump. And then in that function, you'll see we do a couple of things to obviously toggle it back and forth. Then this down here, this is just a simple old paragraph element. I copied the text out of here, plunked it in, underlined things, um, bolded it, italicized it where need be. In fact, I did not italicize right here, I guess, where I should have. So let's italicize that right there. So now it's italics. And so, um, so I tried to keep it as close to this as possible. Like I said, even grabbing the font families, the font size, and the font size on this was 13 pixels. So now let's go into the CSS because I have all the CSS turned off at this point. So this is what you build it out. When you're done building it out, it's going to look like this. And you'll even have these two, uh, you'll have the, the little colon right here because that is actually part of this right here. So that just has that colon in there all the time. And uh, that's why I had to display none. I had to hide the element it's just because it's taking up space and I didn't want that colon right there. So let's open up our CSS and let's uh, widen out this page and we'll push our CSS off to the side. And so now we're just, I'm just going to go down each one of these things here. So the entirety of the order bump element is a class of temp orb 10, uh, 1006. And so let's come over here and we will inspect this element. So we'll inspect the entirety of it and we'll come right here. So we got our um, element right here, our ID right there. We're starting with that. And in the first line of CSS, I then say, go from this element down to its child element that has the class of order form bump. And at that level of order form bump, we want to change the border width to two pixels and we want to put some padding all the way around it. So we got padding of 20, 20, 50, and 20. So then from there, from that element, we're going to step down inside of it. And in here, there are two elements inside of the order form bump. And oops, I needed to open that. We come inside a section content and we come down. Let me see here. Where do I got to go down to? I should have looked at this a little closer earlier. Let me go back here and look at my code. We say checkbox first of type. So we are inside of here, inside of here. And we'll open this up. Here we go. So here we are down here. So we got two classes here. We have two labels and they both have the class of checkbox in line. So we have to look at this and go, how are we going to be able to target this with our selector? Because essentially, both of these two elements are exactly the same as far as how they're being named. The labels are the same, the, the tag here, which is label, is the same, and then they have the same class attributes as well. So what we can do is we use what is known as a pseudo type right here, a pseudo type, no, that's not the right word, pseudo, I guess it's a pseudo element at that point. And so we put this on here, we're saying first of type. So we're saying of the two that we have, just grab the first one. So in our case here, we're going to use first of type and last of type in order to differentiate between the two of these things. And so we're saying, take that element, which is first of type, which would be this part up here. And we're saying, make it a width of 15% and a top margin of minus 17. And so you see there, it just kind of moved it up for right now because we haven't done anything else with the other elements on the page. 
So now we'll go back in here. Well, just look at the next line of text here. So we got the same thing, first of type, and then we say input type equals checkbox. And so that says we need to go down one more layer and we're gonna come down here. Let me see, where do we go here? Here we go. So we go input type equals checkbox right there. And what are we going to do to that element? We are going to make the width of 18 pixels and the height of 18 pixels. So we do that. And so again, all that did is it changed the size. Let me put that back in. We just changed the size of that box. That's all we did right there is we changed the size of the box because I thought it was too small. And so then we're going to say here, uh, the next one here is we're going to say last to type on those check boxes. And on that, we're going to have a width of 84%. Up here, we had 15%. Here, we're going to have 84%. And we're going to text align that to the left. And so that now forces this over. Now, because we had 15 up here, I did not say on this top one, I could have said on it to float it to the left, but I didn't because it wasn't necessary. So by putting in the 84% here, they come up and they line up side by each. And then we have our little image here of the flashing arrow. And all I did is I came over to this page right here. I selected the flashing arrow. And so now we got to come down in here until we find where that flashing arrow image is. Where is it? Okay, it's right here. So I came down, copied this, um, that URL right there for that image, and I just pasted it in right here under content URL, gave it a width of 40 pixels and a top margin of minus five pixels, and then it lined it up perfectly there. Perfectly there, the top, top margin of minus five just pulled it up a little bit. And now here's where we say display none. So we're going to say here on our text center, which should be... Um, right here. Here's our text center. You can't see it on the screen because right now it says display none, but we could turn that back on. You see the two little, you do the uh, colon uh, appearing at the bottom there. And so we're just saying, okay, let's just take that off. We're going to say display none, which hides it on the screen, but it also removes the space that it takes up as far as the height. So it takes that out of there too. Now we are down to our button. And we got a height of 64 with the 270. We got a box shadow around here. That gives us basically the little line at the bottom. And we got some top padding on there. Nothing too exciting. So there is that. And then we got our L, L button sub. So let's come over here. And let's uh, inspect this element. And so here we go. And so we have here... We got our L button main and our L button sub. So the added to order is the sub part of the text in there. And we're going to say with that, at first, we want to display none. So we want to hide it. We want the opacity of one because you can see right now it has a less than one on the opacity. And we want the font weight to be 600 pixels. So if we turn this back off on this display none, you see now it is bigger and bolder, of course. And then we, um, oh, before I forget over here, this needs to be minus 35 pixels in order to come up and line up properly on the page. And so then we're saying on hover on the button, we want a background color of 226303. And we want that to be important. So we'll turn that on. And then the very last, well, almost the last thing, what we're going to do here is we are going to give the um, this text element, this paragraph down here, we want to give it the font family of inter sans serif. Now, what I found is because with ClickFunnels, they upload all of the Google fonts. They don't necessarily have all the Google fonts on the list, which I found to be strange. So I put this in there and I said, okay, I want it to be the inter font from Google and and it actually worked. It's not on the list anywhere, but it actually worked. So they must upload all the Google fonts. They aren't all necessarily on the list for some reason. So if you do have a Google font that you can't find on the list, put it in any way as a font family and just see if it works. And then down here at the bottom, I have two 
um, two additional classes that we're going to use inside of the tracking code. And we got bump border and we got bump button. So this will change the border and this one here will change the background color of the button. So those will get turned on with the JavaScript as we're going through that. So now let's go into our tracking code and we'll take a look at this here because uh, what we have is, let me open this up a little bit wider so we can see all the first bit. And so what we're saying here is take that paragraph that we have down here and we need to insert it up here underneath this text. So we're saying, so take the paragraph and insert it after the element at the top. Well, we already determined that this is a CSS ID selector for the entirety of the bump. This is the order form bump, basically an inner area. We got section content. And then inside a section content, we got this div here. So we're saying only grab the divs that are the child elements of the element that has a class of section content and only return to us the first of type and then put this after it. So let's take a look at that. We'll come over. We will highlight this element right here. And so now I just got to figure out where in the heck we are here. So section. Okay. So we started again up here with our ID. We then said, okay, find the order bump, order form bump below it. Then we came down one more level to the section content and we had to name the section content here because then we had to say, okay, only grab us the child elements that have divs on them. And that would be this element right here. Oops, didn't mean to open it. And this element down here. And we're saying, okay, after the first one, insert the headline. So that's exactly what it did here is it inserted the headline after that very first div. And then we have our function toggle bump, which you already saw is what we put onto the button here. So the button, when it is clicked, calls this toggle bump function. And we're going to say here then, again, we're identifying the class for the, for the thing. We got the order form bump. And again, we've seen that three times. And so we're saying toggle the class of the bump border. So that border is around the outside of the element with the class of order form bump. And so we're putting that on there. We're toggling that. So it's going from red to green, essentially. And then we're saying uh, data title bump button A, which is down here. We need to then again, toggle that, change it from a green background to a black background. And then here we're saying we need to toggle the sub headlines. So we're going to take the L button main and we're going to hide that. And we're going to take the L button sub and we're going to turn that on. So we got two different elements named here. We got the L button main and then we got the L button sub. And so if one is on and one is off, then it's just going to do the opposite. It's going to toggle them and it's going to turn the one off that's on and on that is off. And then we're going to say bump offer click. And that means to click right in here, which then um, activates that, turns it blue. Because what I found here is I expected that when that button change when that uh, checkbox changed it was going to change a class or an attribute or something else and the truth is it does absolutely nothing in the code so i just had to say okay well when all these other things happen just manually click it and then on the opposite end of that i'm pretty sure we click it to turn it off as well so then um down here the next thing says okay this is a click function so yeah that's what we did here is so now when so that would be if somebody clicked this button the first part up here was if somebody clicked this button and triggered that function now we're going to say if somebody clicks on this checkbox do the same stuff essentially just in the opposite order so again here we're saying when somebody clicks that checkbox run this function and then we are going to um, toggle our bump border, toggle our bump button class. Again, changing the background color, changing the border color. And then again, down here, we got our two elements, our L button main and our L button sub. We're going to toggle both of those as well. So you click the button, basically it toggles everything. And then if you click the checkbox, it toggles everything back. 
is exactly how this works. It looks more complicated than what it is, but I got to admit, it probably took me all total probably four hours in order to build out these this entire thing. So that's all I have for today. If you have any questions, just let me know.